Good morning, my friends in Christ. I'm the Reverend Beth Foote, Interim Rector at All Saints Episcopal Church in San Francisco, speaking to you remotely from my home in Alameda. And this morning I'm going to preach and offer a time of prayer and some announcements. We won't be doing a full Eucharist this morning. And I'm really glad that you can join me this morning. This is an unusual time, and it's a time that we can learn how to be together in a different way. So our readings this morning are 1 Samuel 16, 1 to 13, the 23rd Psalm, Ephesians 5, 8 through 14, and the Gospel of John, chapter 9, 1 through 41. And if you have a book of common prayer, please have it handy so we can use it together. So it feels strange to me to be home on a Sunday morning. I usually get into my car and it's dark. I get into my car like at 6.45, drive across the Bay Bridge all by myself, and there's very few cars. Uh, and when I arrive at All Saints, I have my usual chat with Bill, and we get ready for the eight o'clock mass. And then I enjoy gathering with the altar party in the sacristy and presiding, preaching, catching up at coffee hour, and I'm missing all of those interactions. And I'm sure you are too. All of our routines have been upended this week by the coronavirus. So I want to ask this morning, how are you doing? How are you doing? And I want you to reach out to me um, and let me know because I would really like to know. And I want to keep the dialogue going during this strange time that we don't know how long it's going to go. So let me know, how are you doing? And I hope you're staying in as much as possible and taking good care of yourself. Uh, I sent out the church directory in the weekly email earlier in the week, and I hope that you take some time to call your friends and call some people that you don't know very well and introduce yourself, maybe. Um, All Saints is a community, and we need to be in touch with each other to nurture our community, and those that community is made up of many relationships. And this is an opportunity to have some good conversations with people we haven't talked to in a while. And I'm finding that in this era of email and texts and um, when people don't talk on the phone very much, that I am really enjoying talking on the phone. It makes me feel like a teenager again. Um, how am I? Well, I am thankful that our uh, young adult daughter, Hannah, came to shelter in place with us. Uh, she usually lives with friends in the marina over in the city, and it is so nice having her back home. Uh, she works in tech, so she's already a pro at working remotely and using Zoom. And it's been really fun to hear her work voice in the next room. And she's keeping Hale and I uh, in good spirits. And uh, she's joking that she's being our mediator in these days where we can, things can get a little testy at times. So it's great to have her here. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent. What a Lent it is. And I do not have a purple stole at home. So I decided I would wear this wonderful stole that 
my daughter-in-law and her mother made me, which is a Camino stole. And many of you um, first met me when I came to do the um, retreat at Bishop's Ranch about the Camino. And so I think this is a really appropriate thing to be wearing because we are, we're on this journey together. We're on this journey um, of being sequestered, sheltering in place, taking care of ourselves. And so I'm taking some strength from my Camino experience. And here we are, here are the yellow arrows that always told me what direction to go in. And I'm taking some, some hope and some comfort from that. Today's the fourth Sunday in Lent, and it is sometimes known as Latere Sunday in the Roman Church. Latere is Latin for rejoice, and it can also be interpreted as meaning playful. I think this strange time of sheltering in place calls for some playfulness. So I'm talking to you from this, my newly formed sacred space here in Alameda. Um, I encourage you to, break, to make your own sacred space at home that reflects your spirituality and can become a place of prayer for you. So I'm gonna show you what I have here. <clears throat> I have some icons. I have uh, a picture of my mom, who's uh, kind of an icon to me. Um, and some plants. And you can also have this great view of Grand Street in Alameda. Um, and some wonderful light. So I am looking forward to sharing this with you today. I also have this painting of the Truckee River. And I'm going to share a little bit more about that with you in a minute. Uh, so I'm going to be adding to this space over time. Um, but I encourage you again to build your own sacred space and send me some photos of it. Send me some photos. I'd really like to see them. Uh, this morning, we have the 23rd Psalm, and what a great opportunity to look at the 23rd Psalm. And I would like to use the good old King James Version. It is found on page 476 of the Book of Common Prayer. Page 476. So let's read it together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So let's explore the psalm a little. Well, there are six verses to the psalm, and each one develops a theological theme that shows us a deepening relationship between God and humanity. The 
Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Shows us, of course, the metaphor of God as a shepherd. God leads us like a shepherd and provides for us what we need, which is love. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. This verse takes us beyond our human wants. And while the first verse tells us that in God's care, we will be free from want, the second verse declares that a deeper experience is available to us under God's care. And I'm gonna hold up this painting for a moment so you can get a better look at it. So this painting is of the Truckee River. And imagine for a moment that you are led to this place by the river. Imagine lying down in the green meadow next to the river. Listen to the water. Enjoy a moment of peace and lay down whatever burdens you may find are bothering you, hanging on you. Lay down the burdens in the river and let them, let them float away. invite you to keep that practice in mind in the coming days. The next verse is, He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. These third and fourth verses point to God's care of our souls, our inner life. And the fourth verse begins with, yea, though, which I think is really important to notice because it acknowledges that our fear, our anxiety, um, the difficulties of life are real. We are not denying that they are real. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. <clears throat> now being with someone when they are in need is really the most powerful kind of care that you can provide somebody. Sometimes we don't know what to say to someone in need or how to say it but our authentic presence is the most effective thing we can offer. Our authentic presence. And of course, God in Christ is that authentic presence that walks with us, especially through this time of uncertainty. The psalm explicitly says, I will not fear, I feel I will fear no evil because thou art with me. You, God, are with me. And the rod and the staff that are mentioned were instruments that shepherds use to defend and guide their sheep. And as we know, our bishops have a crozier that symbolizes this. It's a way to guide us and to protect us. So this morning I, I um, ask you to picture yourself being under Christ's protection and guidance 
during this coming week. And the fifth and sixth verses show us an abundance of God's love and care. God sees that many are excluded in the human community. And the verse, in the presence of mine enemies, recognizes that. God includes everyone in this heavenly banquet and cares for us with the marks of ancient hospitality, anointing the guest and providing overflowing abundance of food and drink. And as we know, this image of a full table, of a banquet, um, the wedding of Cana, uh, this is an image that comes up again and again in the scriptures. In the last verse, we see that God's mercy and goodness will be with us through life's ups and downs. <clears throat> this week, I read that the Hebrew for follow can also mean pursue. So God's goodness and mercy perhaps will chase us, even if we ignore it or resist it. And theologically, the 23rd Psalm reconciles our brokenness as human beings with the divine promise of God's love. Now, I want to touch for a moment on the Gospel of John reading, which is the story of Jesus healing the man born blind. And I'm sorry, but I'm not going to read it aloud because it is 40 verses long. So please read it on your own. Jesus heals a man born blind who really doesn't ask to be healed of blindness. Jesus does something that would really not pass our current hygiene standards during a pandemic, or really any time. He spits on the ground and makes mud with his saliva and spreads it on the man's eyes. And I think it's interesting that in a way, he's anointing the man like the shepherd anoints the person in the psalm. Now Jesus tells him to wash in the pool of Siloam, and afterwards he can see. He, see, he hears Jesus before he can see Jesus, though. And then the poor man has to explain several times what happened to him, to, the, to his family and to the religious authorities, because no one believes him. And he really doesn't know what has happened. But gradually he comes to believe Jesus is the Messiah. As we gather remotely this morning as the scattered body of Christ, I am aware that we are not worshiping in our usual Anglo-Catholic way. My singing bowl is not the bell at All Saints. But I think our passage today encourages us to imagine the multi-sensory way that the man born blind came to believe in Jesus. He experienced the touch of Jesus' remedy on his eyes. He heard Jesus speaking to him, and finally, he sees Jesus. Our annual Catholic tradition encourages us to use all our senses in our worship, including the sense of taste in the Eucharist. For now, during this extraordinary time when we are not receiving the body of Christ, I suggest we use our eyes, our ears, and our minds to more fully study and consume the scriptures, which are also the living word, the living Christ. And I encourage you to notice the signs of spring and new life that are 
starting to pop out all over the Bay Area. Amen. <clears throat> So now turning to page 388 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray form four of the prayers of the people. <clears throat> page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for our leaders that they may make wise choices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us a reverence for the earth as your creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, our family, our friends, our All Saints community, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for those on our prayer list, for those suffering from the coronavirus, for our medical professionals around the world. And we pray especially for those countries of Italy and Spain and China. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time, please add your own intercessions and thanksgivings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And let us pray today's collect together. Glorious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world. Evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, I have a couple of announcements. The church, <clears throat> the church is closed uh, until further notice due to the coronavirus. Um, we are mentor monitoring the situation, and next week we may return to the church. I am not sure. Uh, last week we had a small group record a mass in the church, and it was really wonderful. You can still watch it uh, on the YouTube channel. And Calvin did a lovely job 
of marking each part of the liturgy. So you can go straight to different parts of it. Uh, the warden, staff, and I are in contact, and we will keep you informed. And Colby Roberts and I are establishing a schedule for morning and evening prayer, uh, and we will let you know. Uh, and we will also let you know how you can participate. I hope to do something that is uh, participatory. Um, I am learning how to use Zoom, and we will see how we can be creative with that. Please stay in touch. I will be in touch with you, and I will be continuing to call people. Uh, please feel free to call me, text me, email me. And now I'd like to end with a blessing. May the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit surround you, protect you, and keep you now and forever. Amen.